Many reactions we catalyze nowadays by metals, transition metals or main group metals. Some of them are very toxic, some of them are very scarce and therefore very expensive. Typically, platinum, palladium, rhodium, iridium, metals which are much more scarce than gold these days. And so certainly one of the important challenges we are facing in catalysis nowadays is to find methods to replace these metals by more abundant ones. Mm -hmm. When think about iron, uh, we have millions of billions of tons uh, of iron around, but there are only 6,000 tons of rhodium. The problem is that the chemistry of iron uh, compounds is very, very different from those of the heavier transition metals such as rhodium or palladium that we typically use in homogeneous catalysis today. Currently 3D metals, um, iron, coal, very recently manganese, are becoming much more uh, important as hydrogenation catalysts and there's a lot of research activity um, in this field of 3D metal hydrogenation um, catalysis. Organotransition metal chemistry and catalysis provides a profound insight into the most important processes in homogeneous catalysis uh, that are also used in industry. So what we are looking in, in, at in my lab in homogeneous catalysis are uh, f hydro functionalizations, so hydrogenations but also hydroborations, hydro um, acetylations catalyzed by iron and cobalt complexes and we're trying to develop very active and selective catalysts and in particular what we are um, looking forward to developing is um, asymmetric catalysis with these metals where there's uh, surprisingly little in the literature mm -hmm. so far. The lecture course reviews the principles of organotransition metal chemistry and applies this know-how to gain a detailed understanding of the mechanisms of these important catalytic reactions. That might be a good interface and match again between inorganic and organic chemistry because typically the tuning of the metals is done by organic ligands and that is something uh, which can be done by organic synthesis quite well. In the lecture on organocatalysis, we are teaching you the principles that many reactions can also be catalyzed by commonly known organic molecules, organic bases, organic acids for example, which one day could become a viable alternative to using the more precious and toxic metals. One of the main challenges is the transformation of uh, very fundamental molecules um, such as carbon dioxide, dinitrogen or the white phosphorus molecule. Dinitrogen is the feedstock for feeding the, world pop the world's population. Which is actually an interesting fact, right? Because the production of ammonia from nitrogen then forms the basis to make amino acids, to make mm -hmm. the proteins in our body. 50% of all the proteins we have in mm -hmm. our body have been produced by ammonia which comes from the Haber-Bosch process mm -hmm. and not from natural sources as many might think. Although mm -hmm. the Haber-Bosch process is being established, um, it's still uh, very frightening to know that it, uh, the energy consumption of the Haber-Bosch process is 4% of the world's energy consumption. Uh, it's a pretty good investment because it feeds 50% of the world population, but if you could even reduce this by a, a few tenths of percent, that would be a tremendous advance of catalysis. So, so we are very much interested in photocatalysis using light for chemical transformations, which is of course very attractive because light is an abundant source and moreover with the new LED technologies we have now we can have very precise and tunable light sources in the lab. Nowadays it is known that many of these reactions can be very efficiently performed if you use a catalyst in combination with light and we are going to teach you the principles and the ongoing exciting developments in this area. Another thing we are very interested in is the conversion of renewable resources. Something again I believe is still in its infancy. Everybody is talking about using renewables for biofuels, for chemicals, but typical renewables like carbohydrates, cellulose coming from wood contain very strong bonds, carbon-oxygen bonds, which are very difficult to catalytically activate. Brings me to our joint project, right? We have a started on a project where we want to convert uh, nitrogen to ammonia and derivatives of this 
by photocatalysis. So I'm looking forward to that collaboration. Hopefully we maybe not save the world, but make a contribution to that I present agree. problem. Approximately 50% of all enzymes contain metal atoms as an essential component. Um, bioinorganic chemistry deals with these enzymes, which are at the frontier between inorganic chemistry and uh, biology. So what kind of metals are those? Uh, so these are metals such as iron, copper, zinc, for example, but also um, molybdenum. Uh, actually, different metals from the ones that we normally use in homogeneous catalysis in industry. Uh, the lecture surveys important enzyme classes such as hydrolases and lyases, oxygenases, hydrogenases and nitrogenases and um, uh, discusses the structure and the function of these enzymes in the context of inorganic chemistry and coordination chemistry. Cluster chemistry deals with metal clusters that is species that are at the interface between molecular catalysts and solid state uh, materials that are typically used in heterogeneous catalysis. Uh, cluster chemistry surveys the synthesis, the structural chemistry and also the bonding situation in various types of metal clusters and also outlines important application of these clusters in various fields. Inorganic chemistry, um, in particular coordination chemistry, is very important for understanding the coordination chemistry and developing the coordination chemistry of elements such as iron in a way that we can actually replace uh, these heavier elements. In the lecture Mechanisms of Metal Catalyzed Reactions, we are going to teach the principles uh, which are present to understand catalysis. Reaction mechanisms are typically very complex. They involve highly reactive and short-lived intermediates and to deduce the typical principles in such reactions, the typical mechanistic cycles is the topic of our lecture.